me a hint, but maybe you don't know exactly the location yet. So I'll tell you, I am in. Excuse the camera quality. I already know it's gonna be grainy because it's kind of dark. It's really not dark, it's just the camera is dramatic. Hello YouTube, it's me KG and good morning. Today is the day. This is my airport outfit. I'm gonna wear some tennis shoes. It's pretty cute. Have a jacket in case it's cold on the flight. But today we are traveling. The first time in my travel vlogs, so I'm not telling you where I'm going straight away. If you wanna find out where I'm going, you're gonna have to stay tuned until the end of this video. Tragic, isn't it? You won't know where I'm going if you watch all of my videos. But I guess we'll see who's who's um my most avid subscribers, but I already did my morning packing, I put my toothbrush and stuff, my bags are all in the kitchen, I just need to water my plants, grab some breakfast real quick, and then we can get going. Okay, so I was going to take the train, but I don't know. It's too late, really. It's already 8.30. My flight leaves in two hours. The train allegedly takes 45 minutes, but last time I took it, I missed my flight. And I really don't want to miss this flight. It was expensive. So I just called an Uber to the airport. It was this, it's the same lady, so I'm gonna have to explain myself, which I don't want to do. But, um, better than the alternatives. Those of you who have been watching for a while now know that I've been kind of struggling to express but continually feeling this feeling of amazement with life. And traveling definitely brings that feeling about me. So as I was on the plane, headed to my destination, I was just looking out the window at the clouds and thinking about the fact that I'm doing this. You know, it's not every day, not every even time of year, like, you know, every century, was it even possible for people to do this? But I'm in a time where I can, and I am, despite the challenges that came in my way before making it to this moment and I'm about to go to another country that I've never been to before and explore a whole new sector of the world. Sometimes I just feel like the world is so big and I feel like I only get this one life, this one chance to live here, so I need to explore more of it. And it's just amazing the things that we are capable of the things that are possible, and the vast experiences that get to come with the human condition. Finally off the flight. Now I'm at, I have to go to passport control, which I didn't know about. They have a little form for me to fill out. And I guess just check my stuff, make sure I'm a real person. And then hopefully I'll be free to go because I want to get lunch before I have to catch the bus. Hello, I made it to the bus. Leaves in a couple of minutes. We're headed to the city that I'm staying in because this airport isn't in that same city. So it's a two hour bus ride. After the plane ride, I'm kind of tired. I wish I could just lay down, but. You wouldn't send me lose some. So, two hour bus ride, and then finally I will get to lay down. There was no food. I thought, okay. I almost, my flight landed at 5. I almost booked the 8 o'clock bus. So I was like, I'll just stay in the airport, eat some food at a restaurant. I'll just chill. Like, I'm going to be hungry. Then I said, let me book the 6 because you never know what could happen. And sure enough, there's no restaurants in this airport. Not a one. Oh, are we leaving? I think we're leaving. There's only like five people on the bus. Let's see it. Uh, there's no restaurants. <laughs> there's no restaurants here. The only they had like a little market where I met a man from Montreal 
and he shared water with me because I only had six bags. So we bought one and he gave me half. It was super nice. And I didn't know he was Canadian. Um, so I got that and I have my cheddar whales. Uh, so I'm just gonna munch. Reading 1984, playing Sims. I'm just gonna chill. It's been two hours. There's nobody in the seat next to me, so. So excuse, oh, excuse the camera quality. I already know it's gonna be grainy because it's kind of dark. It's really not dark, it's just the camera is dramatic. So, hello, I've made it. I want to do a um, Airbnb hotel tour, but I'm gonna wait because it is dark outside. So I feel like it would be better to see it in the morning, so. I don't know if that's going to be in the next video or later in this one, but I'm going to wait. But this place is gorgeous. Super cute. Honestly, better than the pictures. So that's tea. I'm really tired. I've been traveling for 12 hours. Well, 14 hours, I think, with the time difference. Or maybe 8 hours with the time difference. I don't know. But a lot of hours. And I'm just so tired. But I need to go to the store and get like some basic groceries, some water, because you cannot drink the tap water where I am. I need to, you know, get some things together. I need to shower because I'm extremely sweaty. <laughs> and I need to like unwind. But before I get into that, I want to talk to you guys about my process of getting here because I didn't get to film a lot of it because it was... Oh my god. <laughs> so... So yesterday, m me and my friend were discussing, she said she was going to take me to the airport, but we were discussing and we realized that was not going to happen. She would have to drive for maybe four hours total. So I decided I'm going to take the train and last time I took the train, I missed my flight. So I was very apprehensive about it and I was like, I wouldn't have gotten to the station until 8.45. Probably wouldn't have gotten my Metro Pass and gone to the tarmac and waited for a train until nine. The train always claims that it takes 45 minutes to get to the airport. But that is a lie, that is a falsity. But even if it was true, I get to the airport at 9.45, I wait for the bus to the airport, and even let's say there's no wait, there's no wait. So I get to the airport station at 9.45, get on the bus, get in the actual airport at 10, the plane is already boarding. So I decided to call an Uber, another Uber, a second Uber, just to take me to a spot near the airport so I can just shuttle to the airport. And as we're driving, I'm like, Kayla, you trying to save $10 is going to make you miss your flight. So I changed the destination just straight to the airport. And thank goodness I did because I showed up literally as they called my boarding group. So yeah, but I got to the airport, to TSA, went to my old gate. It was the first gate. The angels were on my side. It was the first gate. And that flight just felt so long. It was five hours, but I, I, I don't know. It just felt really long. I don't know. I had a bit of video, so that was cool. I also started reading 1984, and I played Sims. And it was a very long time. Get off the plane, and I need to go to the bus. I explained the debacle with my airport plans. I was going to sit at a restaurant, eat lunch, and then just take my little bus friend. There were no restaurants. Right. Carry on. Get to the bus station. I have to wait 40 minutes for the bus because I was supposed to be spending 40 minutes eating lunch, but no, 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 no. I'm surviving off of crackers and dried apricots because there's nothing to purchase. Finally board the bus. We go on about our merry way and the bus ride, instead of being two hours was three. I don't know why, I couldn't tell you why, but I fully expected it to be two hours as was advertised. And when I got to two hours, we made a stop right at two hours. And I was like, okay, this is it, this is the bus stop. So I put my phone, and I Google map, I'm like, okay, where is my hotel from here? And it's telling me an hour, an hour drive. And I'm like, I'm sorry? What do you mean an hour? The town I'm in isn't that freaking big. What do you mean an hour? And that's when I realized I was not in the town that I was supposed to go to. I was in another one. And I'm like, can I please, can I, pl I'm literally begging you. Can you please take me to where I'm supposed to be? My hotel 
is right off the main road. It was a eight minute walk from the bus stop and it's literally right off the main road. I'm about to go back out right now. They had some cute macrame outfits. I wanna see how much those cost because they're like $300 in the US. So if I can get it cheaper, I'm definitely going to. That's tea for tomorrow. Um, I need to find like a little market or a store or something so I can just get some basic groceries. And there was a restaurant that is still open. So I'm about to get dinner. <laughs> Cause your girl is hungry. It's been a long day. Like, why was I? <laughs> I did this so much. All I needed today was a snack box with like crackers and cheese and stuff. And then whale crackers, like, please. <laughs> People rent mopeds and bikes to get around. I think you need a license for a moped, but if not, if they let me on one, I'm gonna be out here. And then they have all these little eating stands, like they go all down this road. I was gonna go to this restaurant I saw to eat, but I might just stop at one of these on my way back because I just wanna lay down on his leaves. So the quicker I get back, the better. I came to a stall for dinner. I ordered quesadillas. I don't know how much they cost or how we're going to communicate that, but I ordered them. So. I guess I'm waiting to see what happens. Pretty much once you leave the airport, English is gone. Um, it's fine. I'll get by. I ordered the quesadillas. I have my little no data required translator. But I don't know what's going on, realistically. I have a view of the huge avocado. That's crazy. I'm a loser. See, there she go. Mushing it down, flip it over, mush it some more. She's done that a lot. I'm back. I put on Indian matchmaking on the Netflix on the TV. And I just wanted to film my first taste of the authentic food of this place. Okay, also for my very first bite, I like wasn't impressed. But that's just because the innards of the quesadilla weren't really on the very edge of it. The more I ate, the deeper I went into the quesadilla, the better it tasted. Because I actually got the flavors. And like, honestly, for the price, it was a four-year meal but i went ahead ate my quesadilla watched my little show took a shower put my groceries up and went to bed because your girl was not and then the following morning i did this hello youtube good morning it is 7 30 a.m not the time i wanted to wake up but i'll explain why i'm why i'm awake a little later as promised, I'm gonna do the morning Airbnb, hotel, apartment, whatever you wanna call it, tour. And during this tour, I'm gonna reveal where we left. Before we go inside and tour my room, I thought I would show you the rest of the facility. So, let's head downstairs and get started. As you come in, this is the front door. On the other side of it, you can type a little code to get indoors. They have a little hand sanitizer for you. So you enter through the front door, there's the stairs to go up as high as you need to. But over here, they have bikes available for rent. Like I said, people get around on bikes and mopeds a lot. So you can grab you a little bike with a little cute basket and make your way around town like that. I wish I could do that. I don't know if I'll have time on any of my days, but if I do, we'll be getting a bike. They have these cute plants everywhere. I don't know what they're called, but they have them everywhere. And then the apartments. So this is the first floor, as well as the setup for my floor. It's pretty much these gorgeous, huge, gigantic, jimungus doors. Let me show you how tall these doors are. This is the top of my head. And that's the top of the door. There may be 10. Maybe seven foot doors. <laughs> so we head up the stairs. There's this lovely hammock over there. So I suppose um, that person paid a little extra to get a hammock area. There's one up there too. 
um, this beautiful tree and then because we're high up you can start to see views that one is where I'm staying there's a rack for hanging clothes if you have anything wet and then these cute little canisters that you see are actually fire extinguishers we love safety that we do beautiful flowers view of this city I am sure a good deal of you have already guessed where I am but those who haven't I'm gonna tell you soon don't worry more stairs where instead of more apartments there is this lovely cute little seating area with this a bowl this might be an ashtray in my head you can set that bowl on fire and make a little tiny bonfire there's a public toilet for when people are up here nothing crazy there are shower rooms to rinse yourself off over here there is a little sitting area a little sink just the basic essentials for when you are done with your day at the pool that is right girls a roof top pool you better believe i'm taking a dip in this rooftop pool they have these cute little lounge chairs if you want to get some sun it's kind of overcast today and the water is amazing already even though it is overcast today look at bird just right there there go nature <laughs> So as you enjoy a nice little splash, you can enjoy this a beautiful view of the city. Oh, absolutely. I will be rooftop pooling it up. Okay. Don't even, don't even doubt that. <sighs> but now that we've seen all the beauty that the facility itself has to offer, let's go look at my room. Fair warning, my things are scattered about, but I kind of cleaned up for you guys so you can kind of get the full experience. Okay, so they offer taxi service. They have specific people you can call. It's external, but they kind of like work with them. I think that's cute. They request you turn the AC off when you leave. Every apartment here does that. And again, we have this big, big, huge, beautiful door. Over to the right of the door is this gorgeous, huge double window that you can open up as you please. I kind of like to keep the shady one closed. <laughs> but you can open it and there's a bug net. So if you want to just fully let in some outside air, you're free to do so. And then we have this lovely table set up with one of those plants that I mentioned from earlier. These chairs are actually super comfy. Maybe it's because I was so freaking tired yesterday, but these cushions, like, they were giving. So, <laughs> I quite enjoy this space. But why do they have a seating area, you ask? So that you can eat the food that you made in the kitchenette. Isn't it gorgeous? You have this cute little mini fridge, but it's, like, kind of maybe, like, three or four feet. I think it's, like, three and a half, four feet tall. So, it's a pretty big mini fridge. I don't have much in here, but... You can stock it up. You're definitely going to want to buy some water for this location. You cannot drink the water out of the taps. Keep your water stocked. They gave me these two for freezies when I got here. I bought that one as well as two other bottles. So keep your water stocked, my girls. You can even put your water in this like vessel and then use the water dispenser. I'm not, but you can. <laughs> And then they also have a, a lovely microwave for you. I need to put like a shirt over that because it's so bright at night that I can't.
can't sleep, but during the day, it's great to tell the time. Although that's not the time. <laughs> um, and then the kitchenette area, we start out down here with this lovely pressable thing. Is this a waffle maker? Um, hello? Okay. Maybe a waffle maker, maybe a panini press, something. <sighs> Brought some glasses and a strange tray. And then we move up. These are my things, but they provide you with salt, pepper, oil, coffee, sugar, utensils, everything you need to cook on your lovely, beautiful stovetop. Electric girls. These things are so cute. These little fake stoves. So cute. We move. That's my necklace. Don't worry about that. There are these cabinets down below, which open kind of slowly for a reason. But this is where you can find your utensils, a lovely bowl, soft clothes, baby. Okay, that one's not soft clothes. <laughs> um, and then on the other side, you have trash, a bottle of cleaning spray if you want to use it, a little broom. So you, can, you can tidy up if you feel like it. And that's not soft clothes. There's this lovely sink where they provide you a bowl. It had a sponge in it. I moved the sponge. Don't worry about that. Lovely sink with a bowl and some dish soap and a sponge, nice and deep. So you can get them dishes clean. We have a coffee maker for the aforementioned coffee, a blender, some napkins, whatever this thing is. If y'all know what this does, oh, oh, we ain't gonna mess with that. Never mind, y'all. That's not a part of the kitchen. <laughs> There's light switches everywhere in here. So you don't have to have full lights all the time. If you wanna turn part of the room off, you can. And then down here, we have plates, mugs, bowls, pots, pans, cutting boards, strainers, all the things you need to make a delicious meal to eat at your lovely little table. If you walk in straight away next to the kitchenette, you'll see the bathroom, which we're gonna have a look at. I'm gonna turn on the bathroom light, but it, there's a fan attached to it, so don't mind the noise. You head into the bathroom. You guys saw the bathroom a bit yesterday, but it has this lovely, gorgeous, beautiful, amazing, stunning, stellar rock sink. It's like, organic and it's fun, you know, super cute. And then very high pressure sink. No. Very high pressure. So <laughs> I love this faucet system and the sink and stuff. A little bit of counter space to throw your shit. They gave you this hand soap and a cup so you can rinse your little mouth out in the morning. There's this lovely, big, beautiful mirror with a mirror light. So, you can illuminate yourself. So, that is the sink setup. They have a little pressed trash can, don't mind that. Little pressed trash can, cute toilet with the flushies. Flushies, don't mind that. Toilet scrub, again, you can keep it clean if you want to. Paper, I set a towel down for the purposes of the shower. You can also hang your towel here or on this towel rack. And then they have this little cubby where you can put your stuff. That's where I moved the sponge. They provide some body wash and some shampoo that ages for hair. And it comes out of these cute pumps. And there you go. It gets very warm. Don't worry about the water being cold and the water will fall out of your waterfall shower head. Waterfall showers are not really the thing for black girls because we rarely ever wet our hair in the shower, but um, it's, still, it's still cute. It's still given. <laughs> so that is the bathroom experience. And then as we leave the bathroom, we can view the rest of the room the bedroom portion. This is the bed. I did my best. No, I didn't. I quickly made it up so you guys could like see the vision 
but when you come in it's neater than this so it's a lovely mustard yellow pillows loving the decor they put up this macrame up of a little cubby if you want to put your stuff in there they have these lovely bedside lights that of course you can turn on and off these bedside tables i think are so cute and let me show y'all the technology so first we have the tv remote Por la televisión. And then we have the air conditioning remote. It is in Celsius. So, you know, it's a bit of a struggle. I like to sleep at about 24 degrees because the blanket they give you is not that heavy because of the location. Y'all will understand, like you don't need a heavy blanket to sleep here. But during the day, I like to keep it at around 22 to 20. So I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit. But yeah, you just press these little buttons and the air conditioning unit goes right to work. So I thought that was really cute. And then this one is for the lovely fan and light. So if I turn the light off, then you turn the light off and we could put the fan on low. We could turn the fan back off. We could turn the light back on. Super cute, <laughs> sorry, super cute. Um, but as you come around the other side of the bed, you will have these cubbies to put your dirty clothes on and that. They give you towels, an iron, a blow dryer. That's the blanket you can sleep with. So it's a little fucked up because I slept with it. Empty cubbies, free space, full body mirror for the outfit check. This is what I slept in. And then another bedside table for babe. I don't have a babe, but that's, that's okay. We ain't worried about that. Um, I could turn the light off here. And then a wardrobe for all of your closet storage needs with just a bunch of free space, a bar for hanging up all your shit, and a safe to store your valuables. So yeah, that is pretty much the scope on where I'm staying. So now that you guys have seen how absolutely luxurious and beautiful this place is, how much would you guess I paid to stay here? <laughs> type your guesses in the comments and also type a guess on where I am. Where do you think I am right now? I'm giving you guys time to type your guesses. Okay, girl, thank you for guessing. Good guess, good guess. A for effort, good try, good try, you did your best. This room on Airbnb, you can book it, it's called Ujo, Ujo. You can book it on Airbnb. And it cost 47 US dollars per night. So way cheaper than any hotel or Airbnb that you are going to find in the United States. It is on par with the prices of the cheap, crappy -er hotels around here. So this one is honestly a really good deal. You're not paying full resort fees. You're getting a pretty close to that experience. So I'm quite in love with the price, personally. <laughs> and secondly, y'all wanna know where I am. So yeah, there have been plenty of hints. There have been the palm trees, there's been the Spanish, there's been the quesadilla, there's, there's been plenty of hints, but maybe you don't know exactly the location yet. So I'll tell you, I am in Tulum, Mexico. Tulum is a city about two hours away from Cancun. So I flew into the Cancun airport where there were no restaurants, took the bus, to Tulum, the stop in the middle was at Playa del Carmen, another Commodore's destination. And um, I'm in Tulum for a couple more days and then I'll be going up back up to Cancun for my last day because I have an early flight. So this is my Tulum Cancun Adventures. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you guys are excited for the rest of this adventure because I am. Obviously, I came here. Um, <laughs> I just want to report that I am here alone. 
as you can see, it is my first solo travel. It was my first international travel planned by me. And it is, of course, my first solo international travel. So it's exciting to be in a new place by myself, to have made it all the way here on my own, to not have needed anybody to make my own decisions. Because one thing I told myself when I moved to California is, you know, you can do whatever you want. It might be hard, there might be challenges, there might even be things that you want more than the other thing you want, so you choose to sacrifice it. But realistically, you can do whatever you want. If you wanted to get up right now and move to Bali, you could. There's nothing stopping you. You could do it. You could make it happen. So with me, was if I want to get up right now and go take a vacation in another country by myself because nobody will go with me, then I can. Because who's going to stop me? Nothing but me, and I'm not gonna stop me, so therefore nothing's stopping me. They're the, the bot. So it's exciting to be here by myself. Um, it does get a, a lonely. You don't wanna experience all of life by yourself, and I'm alone quite often, but again, I'm alone quite often, so it's nothing I'm not used to. Um, to my parents who are watching this video without knowing that I ran away by myself, um, I am being safe. I did my research. I came to an area that wasn't as bad because there is a lot of drug cartel stuff going on in northern Mexico, but I came all the way down here to stay away from that. I just want to have a good time. So please don't worry about me. I'm gonna be good. I feel way safer. I was very scared of getting robbed, but after being here for a day, I see the situation. I feel better about it. It's a pretty touristy area, so I'm going good. I thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next episode, in which case we will get into the madness that I have planned. And until then, to the please subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Please, it would mean a lot to me. Click my way. Thank you, girlies.